So how does a drug for blood clot prevention become a treatment for restless leg syndrome? I'm Dr. Andy Burkowski of Relax Health, and today's video is on the drug called dipyridamol. So what is dipyridamol? Well, dipyridamol is a drug that stimulates a chemical called adenosine. And it's been used for many years in the prevention of uh, clot formation or narrowing of arteries and blood vessels. So it used to be used along with aspirin for stroke prevention. Now it's most commonly used for peripheral arterial disease. So, so a drug that prevents the narrowing of the arteries in the legs. It turns out that when adenosine is stimulated in the blood, it, it prevents the blood from forming clots. But the, the chemical dipyridamol actually enters into the brain and produces several different effects, some of which are good, some of which cause adverse effects. But it was discovered through research that low iron levels in the brain, which is the main cause of restless legs as we know, lowers the adenosine system in some way. So the theory was dipyridamol, a drug that increases adenosine in the brain, can actually help with restless legs. I've got some uh, adenosine blocking drug right here called caffeine. And caffeine is an adenosine blocker, and that might be why it makes restless legs worse. So this was a concept that was put into a clinical trial that was published in 2021 by Diego Garcia Borroguero and his colleagues in Spain. And they took about 30 people and with restless leg syndrome who had never been treated uh, for their condition, but overall, these were individuals with fairly severe restless leg syndrome. And they were given doses of dipyridamol over two weeks and different things were measured, including their restless leg symptoms and their sleep quality. And it showed really good results. Uh, in terms of uh, restless leg syndrome, the individuals who got dipyridamol improved substantially over 10 points on the International Restless Leg Syndrome scale. And their sleep study showed improvement to sleep quality in terms of falling asleep faster, not being awake throughout the night quite as much. And then on another test, they had fewer leg movements when they were put in a confined space. So the, the results were really good, and clinicians have been using adenosine for the past few years. In fact, the 2024 clinical guidelines put out by the American Academy of Sleep Medicine will have dipyridamol as one of the conditionally recommended treatments based on these study results. So how can it be taken? Well, dipyridamol can be taken at bedtime. Generally, patients might start with 75 or 100, 100 milligrams or so. The highest dose available in the U.S. is generally 75, so increments of 75. In the clinical trial, dipyridamol was generally used between 200 and 300 milligrams at night, and it depends on whether people tolerate the drug's adverse effects. The benefit of adenosine is, for one, it's not a controlled substance in the U.S., so it's easy to prescribe, unlike most of the restless legs medications, and it doesn't overlap with any other mechanisms of the other drugs for restless legs. So it doesn't affect iron. It doesn't affect the opioid system. It doesn't uh, react uh, the same way with the seizure drugs like gabapentin and pregabalin. So it actually can be added on to other treatments without creating major interactions. The issue is the adverse effects. So the most common one in the clinical trial or one of the most common ones in some of the clinical trials is dizziness. And in the clinical trial, bloating or upset stomach are, are pretty common with this drug, and sometimes that causes people to stop using it. Headaches can occasionally occur, but after a few days, some of these adverse effects may go away. For others, it might prevent them from going up to a dose that really impacts the restless leg syndrome. The other thing is dipyridamol is sort of a blood thinner, you can say. So if people are on other drugs like aspirin or clopidogrel, which goes by the brand name Plavix, or on anticoagulants like warfarin, it could be something that the other doctors may not want someone to be on because it might increase the risk of bleeding in those cases. But for the typical individual who, are, who is not on a blood thinner, this probably is not a big concern. 
So uh, in my experience treating those with severe restless legs, uh, this drug does work to some extent. Now I've used it maybe in 12 to 15 cases with mixed results. Keep in mind the clinical trial was on people not exposed to dopamine agonists or developing augmentation as dopamine agonists make the overall condition worse. So these were what we would call natural individuals with restless legs, and those are few and far between these days. But they're really, uh, it does seem like this drug can produce some relief of symptoms and can be tolerated even at lower doses and can be added on uh, to other treatments, even in those who have had augmentation or those with severe cases. And it's really worth trying because it's not a highly regulated drug. It works by a different mechanism. So if people have adverse effects from gabapentin and pregabalin, this could be another drug that individuals try before they jump to opioids. But it definitely is not something that should be prescribed before the first line treatments, which are different types of lifestyle modifications, which I've discussed elsewhere. Uh, IV iron infusion or oral iron supplementation, and then those seizure drugs like gabapentin, gabapentin anacarbil, and pregabalin. But this might be one that you're going to see a lot more in the future as alternatives to the dopamine agonists, which should really not be used except in rare circumstances anymore, uh, based on the overwhelming evidence against them. So keep dipyridamol in mind and probably avoid too much of these adenosine blockers. As always, this video is for general information only. It does not constitute the giving of medical advice. So make all decisions about dipyridamol or how many cups of coffee to drink under the care of a licensed medical professional. And as always, one of the keys to sleeping well is to relax.